Okay, I'm making this video for my little brother. He's kind of stuck in his Camry. And I was looking online to see if I could find some videos that would describe how to, you know, jump a uh, solenoid relay switch to get his car started. Because uh, these things frequently go bad. And I heard a lot of really bad information and misinformation and kind of overcomplicated information. So I just wanted to kind of send him something that would clear it up. Maybe this will help you too. This is a solenoid relay on a 79 Ford. This is a very simple solenoid relay switches. All solenoid relay switches are very simple. All they are is a spring, an electromagnet, and a couple of contact points inside a small canister. And basically what they do is they use a small amount of power to connect a greater amount of power, um, putting it in layman's terms. So essentially, inside this canister here, there's two contact points, and they're spring-loaded so that they stay apart. When you apply power to the electromagnet, they close. And when they close, they connect this wire here, which is just simply connected to the positive terminal on your battery, to this wire here, which runs down to the starter, in this case you know, a kind of a difficult one to get to. Now in a lot of these solenoids are mounted to the starter, a lot of the newer ones. Um, in that case, instead of there being a wire on this side going down to the starter, there's sometimes just a flat piece of solid copper or sometimes there's a wire that goes into the starter. But basically the starter motor is an electric DC motor, it's 12 volts. All it needs is to have positive and negative. The negative goes through the ground of the unit, so it's metal, it's uh, conductive, and if your engine is grounded then your the starter motor is going to be grounded too just by bolting it on. The positive terminal on it is will be the only wire coming off the back of a starter. So, if I were to take a, an electrical connection and go between here and from here to the battery positive, or from this side of the solenoid to this side of the solenoid and connect the two, I'm in effect bypassing the solenoid relay switch. So, if I were having a problem with this system, all I would have to do is turn the ignition to the on position, which would be sending power to the coil, which is right over here. And then jumping this point with this point. So it's really actually a simple thing. Now if you've got a bad starter, or a bad solenoid rather, and you turn the key but it's not starting up but you know you have power all you have to do is connect those two uh, you can do that with a screwdriver you could do it with a pair of jumper cables um, anything you want but basically all you gotta do is get power from the positive terminal of the battery down to the positive lead on the starter and that's it it's really that simple. Okay, so this is a diagram of a Camry starter, um, which is more of a modern starter and it's a more more simple one. I'm not going to show you all of the connections because they really are moot. Uh, the most important thing here is that the starter motor is bolted to the engine, which will be here and thereby grounded so it'll be connected to the battery. Okay, there's a hard piece of copper wire coming off the back of the starter and it goes into the solenoid. Now, the other thing that's on the back of the solenoid is a large cable and it goes into the battery here. So this is the setup on you know, on the Camry. 
all you have to do to bypass the solenoid and make the starter turn is basically connect this hard copper wire to this point on the battery. Then you're not doing anything with the solenoid. Now there's also another post on here, maybe a couple with a smaller wire, and that would go up to an ignition switch. So when you turn the ignition switch, you're sending power to the solenoid, which makes the electrical contact close, which connects this big wire with a small wire. The only reason that car companies use solenoid relay switches is so that we don't have to have big battery sized cables going up to your ignition switch behind the dash. You're using an electromagnet and a smaller amount of power, or to be you know, more precise, using a small amount of amperage, thereby necessitating a smaller wire. Uh, instead of using big wires that otherwise you'd have to have these these big battery terminal wires going to the back of your dash so that's it connect those two uh, connect any power you can also you know if you can't jump the solenoid you could also take a jumper cable and just connect the positive one you don't need the negative one take a jumper cable and connect it to the positive side of the battery Take the other side of your jumper cable and just tap it, or not tap it, but hold it on to uh, this piece of copper coming out of the back of the starter motor, and that'll make it turn. But just remember to make sure, since you're bypassing your neutral safety switches and everything else, the car has got to be in park or neutral. More, It's better to have it in, in park, just to make sure it's not going anywhere and um, make sure that the ignition is on because you, you'll turn the starter, you'll turn over the motor, uh, but it's not going to fire up unless the ignition's on. So you go into the car, turn the key, verify the car's in park, come back out, connect those two points, boom, it should start right up, unless you don't have power or you have a different problem.